All right, before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about sanitary conditions. With any kind of body product you're making for someone else, always wear gloves, always wear protective clothing, care for your own self, and always, 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 if you have a cold or something, wear a mask. Um, if you're going to be working with powders, wear a mask, or, um, you know, at least avert your face when those fumes start coming up. Now we're going to be making cold process liquid soap dilution. And one thing you have to do, it's not something that's optional, um, whether it's your family, whether it's you're making it for, um, to sell. If you're going to make a uh, cold process liquid soap, and you're not going to be able to use it within a day, you have to use a preservative. Now there are a few products on the market that claim they are preservatives and what they are actually is they prevent your oils from going rancid. They do not stop bacterial growth. Grapeseed extract, rosemary oil extract, those are good for your oils. But that doesn't take care of the water issue. The water is going to make very bad things happen. Now let me just show you what happens to soap. Um, if you don't use preservative, I mean, you might think, oh, the preservative is high enough, the, the pH is high enough, it won't, um, nothing can grow in that. Well, here's a soap that I made and left. And do you see that line right there? It's kind of a nice greeny color on the bottom. This, this is all bacteria. This, this is gross, gross, gross. Do you really want your family using that? Um, not my family, um, not my customers, not in my life, not on your words. I'm just going to go wash my hands again and we'll get started again. Alright, so there are lots of different preservatives on the market. One of my favorite are the parabens because they have time tested not to do the nasty like that one did. Um, but there are a few, a few other ones that I've got coming in that we'll try. I've been using Germavent 2 for 20 years and I've never had any problems with my lotions or my creams or anything that I add water to going bad. Um, and you must, must, must have a um, effective um, preservative in there, especially if you're putting like fresh fruit and stuff in there as well because anything with a high protein content, anything with a high sugar content is just food for little animals to grow in your products and you don't want that because you know again uh, lawsuits happen right none of us want to have to use our insurance but uh, that's why we have to be careful and we need to protect ourselves and our protect our customers um, so without further ado let's get started so this is a preservative I'm using it's called Germavin 2 and I got it from Voyager this is my diluted cold process liquid soap. Look how clear it is. Isn't that beautiful? And it's fairly thick. It's kind of like Dr. Bronner's. And that's without any thickeners. That's just at a three to one dilution. And I'm going to be using some grated cold process and melt and pour soap that I didn't. Here's that cold process mashup <laughs> so, that I did. Um, this went all crystally when it. Uh, this was a weird, weird mistake, but you know, it's, uh, it's by mistakes that we make uh, wonderful things too. So you just grate up your little pieces of soap, and this is a whip soap, so it breaks really, really easy, which is kind of cool. It also floats. I'll be making some more of that this year for sure. I already got the rubber duckies made. All right, so that's, that's what we're using, about a cup and a half of that. So you take a couple, cup and a half of that, and a little bit of water and blend it all up. Now this is a fragrance added to, we're gonna add a little more fragrance, but it looks like a thick paste. And then you take your liquid soap and 16 ounces of water and, um, and dilute the other half. So I'm just gonna scrape this out and add them together. So this is all brown because it's all the colors mixed together. Anytime you use red, yellow, and blue, you get brownie colors. I made some bath bomb in beds thinking I would like my bath bombs to shoot different colors out of each side of it. Maybe this is how they did it because I saw a little uh, kawaii um, 
cloud shoot rainbows out the bottom and I thought I saw the back of it and I went oh so they made a little embed with all the colors on it well no it didn't really work out because the three colors I intensely colored and because it's red yellow and blue I thought oh I'll get orange and I'll get purple if I position them right yeah no that's not gonna work so if anybody can give me some pointers on how to make my embeds shoot out the sides when it's going I would be so grateful because I've done it about six different ways and so far it hasn't happened right so I'm going to actually increase the blue and increase the scent I'm using mermaid kisses from nurture soap actually it's mermaid kisses from nature's garden I'm just going to give this a blend now for this quantity, I used about 15 to 20 mils of scent, and it wasn't, it's uh, Nature's, what do they call it? It's not Nature's Garden, that's where I get my mycos. It's, um, Nature's Garden Mermaid Kisses. It's a very soapy scent, so I didn't really need very much. It's quite strong. I'm just going to put down the sides here. Let me get a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. of two things. You can use a syringe like this to then go from the bottom and pipe it into your bottles or let's try some alcohol and see what happens. It usually works. Yeah, so the alcohol will help break some of those bubbles down so you at least have fewer to deal with. So it's not perfect but it works a little bit. Like I said, though, if you don't want the alcohol in there, just pipe from the bottom. Now, I like this thickness. Now, because you're combining the two different types of soap, the bar soap is opaque. You aren't going to get a clear soap with this method. Um, you could just add fragrance and color to that if you want nice, clear soap. But if you um, don't add polysorbate, your clarity will suffer. So... Um, let me show you the difference. Uh, I'll show you the difference in a video where I'm making a clear soap that's colored. Okay, so here's the opaque. You know what this looks like. And I am going to fill these with my piping, to, with my fill up my jar with uh, with my syringe. So I'll just show you how that's done. Now this was the holding jar for it last night when I was dissolving um, the um, some of the other soap that I used. Um, so I'm not even, no, I'm not going to, well, I'll show you how that works. And yes, I will. No, I won't. Yes, I will. No, I won't. All right. So if this was a jar that you were getting ready to sell to the public, And you could just pipe it in like this. And you need to let it sit overnight for it to thicken. But it will. And it's got a nice thick texture. I'll show you one that's already been done. This is kind of therapeutic though. Look at that. Shook. It's slowly filling up. I think with those rainbow embeds, what I'm going to end up doing is just making one, whatever color is my, my main color, 
that I want the water to be. I'll just make sure it's nice and strong um, and put it in a nice big ball and that way the other colors just make it purple or something rather than brown. I still got a few bubbles but tomorrow morning they'll be gone. I've been looking at this and I think I want to make it a darker blue. Now remember the preservative is added in this one at a rate of 1%. So for every 100 mils, for example, there is a mil of um, preservative. So, all right, but you can, you, can, you can cut that in a third if you don't, if you want to reduce that uh, particular rate. So I'm going to add some, some blue that I've already, I'm going to add, make it quite blue. I'm just going to use my little stick blender. Let's see how blue I can make this. It's changing. I don't think I'm going to get into my easy color stash because the legs just aren't very strong. And I like a little intensity, hold on. All right, so I'm just gonna use a teensy bit of teal from Easy Colors. All right, here's my teensy stick. sprinkle see what that does Do you see how intense that is Do you see how the, like that little tiny bit let's see what that does oh wow I'm glad I didn't use more that's more like mermaid kisses all right I like that all right so I'm gonna bottle this up and I'll show you what it looks like in the bottle all right, so I've got some sanitized bottles, and I'm just going to show you me feeling one because it's just kind of cool. And another clean syringe. We'll see. Oops, my color needs a little mixing. Well, they all will look the same. I think the biggest challenge I'm facing right now is finding quality bottles at a economical price. When I'm bigger, that won't be such a problem. <laughs> but when you're teeny weeny and you're only making a liter or two at a time, it's a problem. So there you go. Handmade liquid soap that's not goopy and gross. Now one thing more you might want to do if you're just storing it in a big jar or before you pour is just strain it in case there's any little lumps of uh, soap that didn't dissolve. And then you don't have to worry about them getting clogging the bottle or anything like that. So it's a nice creamy thick soap and it's not slimy at all. There you go. Click subscribe if you enjoyed this or learned something new. Um, share me with share our post with your friends. Um, and uh, yeah, or leave a comment below. Thanks so much for coming and watching. Bye bye. Okay, one more quick demo. I just want to show you how cream how how uh, lathery and creamy this is. So I'm gonna purposely make bubbles. Check it. All natural. Well, maybe sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, creamy, wonderful soap. Mermaid kisses. That almost looks like a good shaving soap. You'd have to uh, lather it up really good first, though.